So welcome everyone. This is the Sarah Erase meeting. I'm Lisa Chapman with Michigan Coalition Against Homelessness. Welcome. Glad you're here. We're just going to go through the introductions. Uh, well, actually, they're, they're in chat. I will go through what our agenda is today. And I just wanted to say, hoping for a really interactive uh, hour together today. Uh, we're going to cover the latest guidance that Mish just sent out on the Sarah program. A little bit about using Sarah 1 versus Sarah 2, because I may just want to clear up if there's any confusion or just solidify things. Talking about the demand for repayment, um, not the letter and template, but the um, uh, information that we got um, that you'll see from, um, it's going to be in the portal, kind of a method for doing that. Talk about the portal, portal closure and tenant assistance, uh, focus groups, which is a new thing for us that we want to float and let you know about, uh, the webinar we have coming up future directions and any questions and wrap up. So I wanna make sure that uh, we have time to, to get to any questions that you have. All right. Of course, my computer is not cooperating with me. Oh, Allison, maybe you're gonna to have to do that. Well, let, oh, there we go, okay. Just a reminder that we are here. Um, Micah has a grant with the National Low Income Housing Coalition for race, which they call um, end rental, not end, uh, extend rental assistance um, in, in ways that is visible, accessible, and preventive across the country. We are a cohort of about 40 organizations that have these grants. And so we're working alongside you and Mishta to help um, just this effort be really successful. So that's just a short commercial. So I wanted to cover some of the latest guidance. So oh, this is going to be, I changed the timing and it's still not working. Okay. So all the funding is appropriated. Mitch does not, oh, Allison, I don't know. I wish I could lock the, I did change. I'm not even touching my computer, but. I'm not either. And I changed the timing and it's still not working. All right. So I apologize for this. I'm just going to have to keep going back. So the funding is appropriated. Um, there was some confusion about going back to denied applications from, you know what, I think I'm gonna, can, um, just gonna see if we can go back to, um, let me see, I don't know, because you're the host, all right. Do you wanna send it to me and I can see if I can share my screen? Maybe it's something I weird. I can't even get out of this. <laughs> I can't escape. I can't. All right, we're just going to do the best we can. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Um, so you're not going to go back to all the denied apps that had the different timing. Um, if you have somebody within the last week or so, but otherwise, tenants can reapply if they were denied with that date from you know the the first chunk of Sarah two with the. December 20th arrear state. Oh, for God's sakes. I am, I'm gonna stop sharing. I apologize. I'm going to reshare and maybe, all right, Allison, I'll send it to you. Sounds good. All right, hang on folks. Talk amongst yourselves real quick. Um, or does anyone have any questions or anything that you wanna talk about that you are doing with, um, Denials? Are you taking a look back? Or are you just letting people know they can reapply? We'll post the recording to our YouTube channel and send it out after to answer the question that came up in the chat. Oh, I can't even see it right now. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so this is Michelle LaJoy. I guess my question is, are there allocations that will not be used up in an area? I know we're going to be out of funds if once we're looking at our applications and we're going to um, have to contact a, a large number of applicants, they're still coming into the portal and we won't be able to serve them. That's a good question. So Peggy, are you looking at uh, closing the portal in some areas sooner that like the UP that has this issue? Hi, 
Um, no, the portal will be closing at the same time for the whole state. So what, from my understanding, we are going to be looking at numbers after the, um, all the April, if, uh, I'm sorry, all of the April FSRs are in. Um, and then at that point, if there's going to be any shifting around of money, it will happen then. Um, but we definitely don't want denial sent out at this time because it's it's too too far out yet um, to know for sure. Okay, but Peggy, I, I guess I would like um, maybe Mishta to understand the number of phone calls that are coming through um, that it's taking a lot of the staff's time um, because we can't say you're denied due to no funding. Okay, so basically people are calling and saying, what's the status of my application and you can't get to it yet. Um, I, but you have, but so you're just doing that based on projections or um, because nobody is out of money right now. Yep, it is projections. Okay. Um, I will ask Kelly, you know, if she wants um, to do things differently. And um, like, I'm just kind of curious, like how just a rough ballpark um, figure, like how many applications do you have that are definitely beyond the dollars that you have? I can't give that to you right now. Okay, I don't it's okay. I mean, I'm just wondering if it's like hundreds or like 15 or, you know. Um, Dozens, yeah. And I know the number will grow every day, <laughs> so. Okay, sorry, I can't, I don't have that number. It's okay, it's okay. I'll still, I'll still bring the issue up. Okay, Thanks. thank you. All right, that's helpful. Um, can you go back to the, I know that, I don't know why that slide doesn't like to stay. And I should have printed them out, but I didn't. So here we go. So um, for the new funding must have arrears before March 30th. So basically people right now, it's still you know mid-April. So folks are basically, um, it's pretty good. People have, if they have arrears. Um, motel assistance ends June 30th. So you need to get people housed and pay for that security deposit or whatever first month you know, by then. Oh, maybe, thank you, Nancy. Maybe just go to the, um, not the slideshow, but you know, the, the one where, there we go. That's what I was gonna try, thank you. All right, that's good. So um, paper apps in the portal by June 30th or sooner. Um, did I see two different dates, Peggy, for um, the portal closing? I, I know you've talked about uh, the end of June, but I thought in the latest guidance it said maybe the fifteenth. We don't have um, a firm date. We don't have a precise date yet. Um, so the paper applications have to be some, um, entered into the portal by whatever date the portal closes. Okay. Um, so if there are agencies that are behind and paper applications, use this time now to get those caught up. Um, there'll be about a four week notice of when the portal closes, um, but we don't have the date. So, so I wouldn't say June 30th for entering paper applications because it could be sooner. Okay. Helpful, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so hopefully everyone has that. Allison can, all right, no, we're good. You just have that little sidebar on the right. Yes. Okay. Um, so zero one funds spent by June thirtieth. Oh, that should that shouldn't be dollar sign. It should be four weeks notice ahead of portal closure by Mishta. Anything? Oh, I don't see anything in the chat. If you need clarification, let us know. So just some you know conversation about the differences between zero one and zero two. Zero one funding is the priority to spend down. Um, as I mentioned, households that are unhoused, this is the one that has a little bit shorter time frame uh, for months of arrears. Uh, this is perfect for people who don't have a Michigan ID and spend down, they're targeting by the end of June for this tranche of funding. 
for Sarah too, there's more broad, you know, use a little bit longer time for months of arrears. You would use this funding for households with a higher amount of arrears or, you know, depend, as long as they're within the income bands. Does anyone have any questions still about Sarah one and Sarah two? Okay, I think we're just getting some background noise. So why don't we go to the next slide, please? Great, so this is the um, information that was in the update last week about the demand for repayment in the letters. So the software vendor will be updating the SARA portal to add a debt owed section and a function for agencies to generate those demand for repayment letters directly from the portal. And additional information will be sent out after it's been, you know, tested tested and you know in solidly in the portal. So any questions about that? And you were supposed to send your all your um, yeah Peggy is there a projected date and I know today uh, just your information was due on that function. So I believe we will be releasing instructions on how to use it next week. So it's coming soon, um, probably, you know, like probably within two weeks at most. And I think this will definitely make the agency's jobs a lot easier. And once once we know it's working OK, then it will eliminate the need for the um, demand, the overpayment um, demand for repayment spreadsheet that's due every month. So not quite there yet, but um, soon. Okay. And let me go back. And, um, somebody's saying they didn't receive the update email. It was in the same update, the Friday update that Mish just sent. Um, Peggy, will you message everyone when you have that done? Um, when the update, the Kinetech function has been added to the portal. Oh yeah, it'll be, um, it will be in the Friday update, um, either this, well, I think they're testing it this week. So probably next week. Um, I mean, we can't get it done until we have all that information from the partner agencies. So it may be about 10 days away yet, but it will be announced in the update. Um, and the kinetic update, the bolt, those, I don't know why those are sent out inconsistently, but whenever they are sent out, included as an attachment to the weekly update. So you can always find it there too. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Allison, I don't know, is this the next slide? <laughs> okay, yes, thank you. Here we go. All right. Let's see what this says. So we are going to, you know, one of the things, you know, hopefully we'll have some conversation today and thinking about back to the old days before we had all this fabulous rental assistance funding. And, you know, uh, in the absence of this and assuming, you know, it'd be great if we had some um, other resources, either state level or there's a, a bill pending uh, federally that's just going to be introduced on the House side that would add $3 billion for nationally for emergency rental assistance, but it's not a done deal yet. And so thinking that, you know, you may not have this funding or there may be a gap. What are some thoughts around existing community resources that you might have for rental assistance and motel funding? Um, thinking about what you used to use or what remains. Um, I know in some communities, your philanthropic partners chip in. I know there's also some faith-based organizations that help people, you know, uh, get into motels and, you know, house them there for a week or two or until they can find an apartment. Some civic organizations as well. 
And I also listed two sources, um, state emergency relief and ESG potentially. So what are some thoughts that people might have on some of this? What are you thinking about in your community? I think I see any hands up yet. Does anybody remember the old days? I'll ask, I know some of you have also put in place separate, in addition to your coordinated entry, separate, you know, phone banks and call centers. Are you thinking about um, segueing those into your existing coordinated entry or are you going to disband them? What are some thoughts? Lisa, I think we're all trying to figure out ways to incorporate some of the staff that we have utilized in Sierra and other ways. Um, getting more. ESG would be fantastic, but then we always have uh, restrictions and stipulations that don't allow us to help uh, a lot of the people who come to help come for help during right. Sierra. So uh, I think this is, you know, a work in progress trying to figure this all out for every Absolutely. region. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Nate is saying we have concerns as many landlords we work with have been continuing to raise the rent. And we see a continued potential challenge with FMR. I know, yeah, um, I've seen stats that um, rental rates have been going up double, double digits. And I know that um, at least back in February, it was seven consecutive months. And I don't have any reason to think that March was any different. Uh, we don't have the stats for April, of course. So it's definitely a concern. Julie's saying um, we're concerned about the rental market and burnout on landlords on assistance programs. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. And, you know, landlords, some of them already didn't even take, you know, third party payments or didn't want to take any government assistance. Um, and so this has really stretched their, their patience, their goodwill. I mean, it is, you know, it helps support their business, but on this, on the other end, you know, there's concerns about how long that will last and whether people will have the ability to take over the rent. All right, let's go to the next slide. Thanks, Sarah, as well, for coming. So, yes, portal sometime in June, not sure when. So, just wanted to hear from some of you about what your thoughts are um, in terms of messaging. I'm sure Mishta will be doing, you know, making changes to their page, their Sarah page, but what will you do at the local level and how are you going to inform your tenants, your landlords, partners, colleagues, the general public? So let's start with that. Anybody have any thoughts on that? The other caveat I did wanna mention is the difference between you know, the portal's closing, so no new applications will be accepted versus those of you that have already replied, we're going to be still processing your application. So different kinds of messages, definitely, and, and potential for confusion. Um, our agency has funding that is available. The requirement is that a person must apply through DHHS first. We also try to refer to call 211 in our area. Great. The agency records assistance options in Muskegon County and shares information with clients based on their need. I would note, please contact 211 for options available. That's great. Thank you. Yep. Lisa, I also think like the the consistent changing of CIRA and the qualifications and everything have really um, been such a mixed message for all community members. 
I know most of us have coalition meetings and local planning body committee meetings, as well as strictly CIRA update the area meetings. And when we have these, we have so many new things to explain and for them to understand every time we have one. So it, even though they get the word out to the public, it just, it's really confusing to them. Thank you for that comment, Sarah. Yeah, and the, uh, the consistent thing about Sarah and really with the ER funding nationally is that it's been a lot of change. There have been, uh, even Treasury has, has tightened, you know, I don't want to say tighten, but made more clear their guidance as well and changed some of the regulations. So there's been a lot of changes in this program that's, you know, what is it, a year and a half, a year and three quarter old. Um, there's a request that MISTA could MISTA design and distribute a media, media release regarding the portal ending. That would be probably beneficial for consistent messaging. We, we are planning on a press release um, that we would definitely share. So, um, and then, you know, Misha's website will be updated. The Sarah website um, will be doing everything we can to get that word out. Great. Thank you. Uh, Kristen is saying, I've been using a disclaimer message in all my outgoing eligibility emails about the estimated closure date. Uh, for those that have yet to recertify, I have sent a notice to them about the upcoming closure in case they are interested in applying. That's great guidance. It's very smart. Tiffany's saying they plan to put out a joint press release in Oakland County. A couple of your partners there, great. Those are all great. Anyone else? You think about all the ways that you notify people of the availability of Sarah, you also have to kind of try and think about all those same venues and opportunities and methods to talk about the closure and the wind down, ramping down of the programs. All right, so let's talk about staffing considerations now. What are people thinking about in terms of staffing levels? after the portal closes, folks that you need to continue on to process the remaining applications, whatever reporting you have to do, thoughts about deploying them for other programs potentially, or you know, partner agencies in the community, keep them in the family, so to speak. Anyone have any thoughts there? I do have one question about this. I know that the portal is closing in June. Um, do we, since we have case management already budgeted out till the end of September, which was the original uh, date on all of our grants, how is that going to work going forward if we process all of our cases in June, July, and we still have staffing funds and things like that and obviously we can't move funds over at least too much if we want to keep our staff to do anything that's left over i'll let peggy answer that yeah, yeah, and that will possibly become an issue for every agency as we get closer um it, you know at the end there will be a little bit of tying up of details that staff may need to stay on for, um, but not for an extended period of time. So it, I think a, each agency is going to have to evaluate how much money they have left and is it enough that they can request to change some into financial assistance or is it, um, you know, if they do that, then there won't be money for staffing. So it's each each um, area will have to be looked at individually and it, it's not going to come down to the exact penny um, for, you know, equaling out as far as assistance money left and staffing. So um, if your agency spends all the money pretty quickly, um, 
and then there's not enough to convert some into financial assistance and still have the staff, then it, it may just be um, at the end, you know, that small amount put towards another part of the state. Thank you. Thanks, Penny. Mm -hmm. And I think like everything else in this program, it's it just unfolds as it happens, unfortunately. Um, so, but that's, you know, what I anticipate will happen. Yeah, that's been the story of this for sure. <laughs> Any other thoughts or questions about staffing or thinking about winding down? All right, Allison, you want to go to the next one, please? All right, so this is something um, that we, that Micah decided that we are going to do. Um, part of our effort is to capture um, the experiences of landlords, tenants, all of you, but also our legal aid and court partners. Um, in this emergency rental assistance program, um, what lessons did we learn? What could we have done better knowing now what we didn't know back then? Um, you know, are there differences in geographic areas around the state? Um, so we wanna do this in the next couple of months because our grant winds down our grant in July. So, um, we would love, we, we need you to help us. Um, you know, we have some, some contacts with local folks, but not many and for sure not a lot of landlords and tenants. So um, to the extent that you can, um, we would love for your help to have us, uh, you know, source people who are interested in um, talking about their experiences. We will pay for uh, tenants for their time to, participate in the focus group. I don't know what professional people, you know, get paid for their time anyway. I don't know about landlords, probably not. If, hopefully we'll find some willing landlords, but for sure we'd love to pay for tenants. Um, and your time to, you know, if you do coordinating and things, and I can't give you exact dollar figures right now, but um, for tenants, I want to say it would be what did we say, Allison? Like 100, 150 to participate? I think 150. So it's definitely um, decent for maybe an hour or two. Um, I can put something out, Tiffany, if you want more specifics. I know this is pretty um, general right now. But yes, we can put something out, what we need and what we're hoping for from you. Definitely. I'm wondering if people could just put in the chat if they even can think of someone that might be appropriate. Not the person's name. <laughs> just like, yes, I might be able to send someone your way just so we have a game. Yeah. The feasibility of this, that would be helpful, I think. Great. Yeah. But we definitely hey, have... Go ahead. Good. He's just, he's just going to ride with you. Okay. Oh. I have a meeting, a Zoom meeting, so... Okay. I'll be back. I, Great. I think we're hearing somebody's conversation. Okay. Um, the, yes, Julie, I think these would be virtual sessions just to make it easier for folks. And people have a comfort level still or non comfort level with being in person. Um, maybe if we get the same, you know, a lot of folks from a, a certain area, we could do something maybe outside, but yeah. Um, We'd love to hear from you, and we 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 do definitely want to you know um, get rural and urban experiences as well. So thank you all for your affirmations in the chat. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. All right. You can go to the next one, please. And part, and if you, if you have willing core partners, we have done a couple. Um, you know sessions and we do know some legal aid folks, but if you have somebody that you really think would be great in expressing 
what this journey has been like. We would love to hear from you and from them. Um, we are doing a webinar, finally got it together for uh, next Wednesday. On the Sarah, um, not Sarah, it would be for Sarah administrators, but we're going to look at eviction diversion programs that have been in existence for decades. There's a couple around the state. Uh, we are going to be hearing from Ing Ingham County and Lansing and Kalamazoo County, Kalamazoo folks on how they got started, their funding, their partners, their process to kind of um, see if you can sustain this effort as well. So we'll be you know, talking to them about who the partners are and how they pay for their time to really um, do this coordination and, uh, you know, help the courts out and provide uh, staffing for eviction diversion. So I will send out a link, um, but please note it will be 2.30 to 3.30 on Wednesday, the 27th. All right, next slide. So now I just wanted to hear from you about some of your thoughts about if you were to keep this going, what would it take for you to keep keep those relationships and, and maybe not at the same level of effort that you're doing now, because hopefully, um, you know, it won't be needed, but we certainly know that evictions do happen and that um, what would it take for you to partner with courts and legal aid? Um, Interestingly enough, the funding that the legal aid folks have received will go into 2023. So there's still some uh, availability. So that's good news. Uh, there is a possibility of using some you know, state uh, recovery funding, fiscal recovery funds or American Rescue Plan dollars, perhaps. I mentioned the federal bill that's um, being introduced. Um, so does anyone have any thoughts on, um, even if it's a smaller scale program, keeping it going, or have you had conversations locally about this, or have you just had your head down and not even had time to think about it? Hi, Lisa. Um, this is Stacy. I have something to add. Great. Hi. Um, yeah, Hi. so we've had, we've actually been, um, asked, you know, what's next from, our partners um, at the district court. So I think that anything that's moving forward um, should still continue to have that very close relationship um, that we have um, with the district courts um, because I know they're very anxious to, to hear what's next as well. And I know they've appreciated everybody's help, whatever level it was, um, because one thing is very clear, you know, the homeless response system and the housing system is very, complex and not something that they are familiar with so they appreciate all of your expertise uh, the biggest hurdle in my service area is the accessibility to assistance programs some of our other grant programs are difficult to navigate yes i fear we will see a large increase in the number of those struggling with maintaining housing absolutely that's my fear too Bernie saying we have started to form an eviction diversion program in our county right before the pandemic started. We plan to continue that. And Bernie, what area of the state are you in? If you could put that down and just because I know Genesee has had something, but um, I wasn't able to get to them. Um, St. Clair County, wonderful. Well, that's great. Good to hear. Is there any indication that another grant program will be upcoming to take the place of Sarah? I don't know, Peggy, if you want to talk about that. I know I've, I've heard state partners talking about it, but certainly um, nothing is set right now. Um, nothing to the extent of Sarah. Um, I mean, we had EDP and, and then who would have known, you know, about Sarah coming, but it's not going to be like um, that after Sarah there. Uh, I don't, I just don't know, you know, of any, anything concrete that I can say, but um, definitely nothing of the size, you know, the dollars that Sarah has. Yep. Um, 
So the one that I um, was talking about at the federal level is called Stabilized Families During Crisis to Prevent Evictions or the Evictions Crisis Act. And it is, it is uh, I'll put this in this chat. It is already introduced in the Senate. So it has a Senate number, which is SB 2182. That was introduced um, by Senators Bennett of Colorado and Portman of Ohio and Brown of Ohio and Young of Indiana. Uh, Representative Richie Torres from New York, who some of you may have, may have heard from or heard of, uh, is supposed to be introducing it in the House soon. The bill would establish a permanent emergency rental assistance program funded at $3 billion annually to help families facing a financial shock avoid eviction. The bill is supported by the, uh, the, at the national level by the Opportunity Starts at Home campaign. And um, they have kind of a fact sheet, which I don't have handy, but I just have that from our um, friends at National Low Income Housing Coalition. And it was part of our Capitol Hill lobbying day. So it is something that um, hopefully will get, gain some traction. Um, I'll know more about it next week when we have our another update call. So that's at least something that's pending on the horizon. And then I just, uh, you know, wanted to point out that um, there is an eviction expungement legislation bill in the Senate, right? State Senate by Senator Winnie Branks from Grand Rapids. It is SB 949. And that is getting a lot of attention and hopefully uh, some good traction. Um, they are kind of uh, following a narrow path for that bill and uh, don't have a house companion bill yet. Um, not sure uh, if they're going to be seeking one this term or not, but um, we will be having Senator Brinks come on our May 2nd legislative action call that we host and she can talk about it. So really excited for that. Okay, and go to the next slide, unless there's any comments from anyone. I don't think I see any. One more thing I have to ask of you, of course. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, a race grant with National Low Income Housing Coalition. And I have to do my report for the first quarter of this year. And if anyone has a success story to share with me that I can share, um, that would be lovely. You guys are all closer to the ground. Oh, yay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, you know, and we'll, if you have a couple, I mean, we would, we could do a blog on it. We could put it in, you know, our newsletter, on our, you know, website. We have a lot of ways of kind of amplifying and highlighting all the great work that you're doing. So I don't want to limit it to just one. If many of you have success stories, please send them in um, to me. And we um, have a fabulous intern who is a re also a reporter. He's uh, written a lot of great stories. He just got one placed actually um, Sunday in the uh, Lansing State Journal on the criminalization of homelessness. It was a really good story. Um, so he could also, uh, you know, interview somebody. He's done some tenant interviews for us. So if you have any tenants, landlord, or even Sarah's staff success stories, we would love to um, get them out and get all the great work that you're doing out into the rest of the world, rest of the state. Thank you. All right, next one. Does anyone have any questions or comments or things that we haven't covered? Burning questions, now's your chance. Does anybody have a funny joke? The snow yesterday, right? How much did you all get in the UP? Our cat received a dusting, Ishpamine, and um, Nagani probably received it about an inch. 
We got two inches down here. You can yeah. keep it. I am so <laughs> old. <open. laughs> I am a couple of inches in the suit. Yep. All right. I will keep it. Hopefully it will melt. We're supposed to have be 70s by the weekend, so it will just be a faint memory by then. Anything else? Anybody want to make any announcements? I'll put in a plug. Uh, we have our Breakfast of Champions coming up May 10th. We have some fabulous award winners. Some of you who are on this call are from communities that are being recognized. We have a great uh, champion uh, in the public policy realm that we're going to honor. Uh, a lot of the great work that you're doing, some volunteers. Very exciting. Allison has some great trainings coming up. Yep, tomorrow we're having workplace well being. So, if you want to know how to keep and retain staff and to have a healthy work life balance, you should join us. We have HUD's equal access rule in practice, which may not apply to a ton of people on this call, but I would highly encourage it for any shelter providers in your COC. And then the free training next month is going to be on the Clean Slate Initiative with Safe and Just Michigan. And you can okay. find information about all of those and our Breakfast of Champions um, on our website that I'll put in the chat. Thank you. I also got a question from someone about um, the county eviction diversion program. Uh, can private agencies also have this program or is it a program that is bid on? I don't know that it's something that's bid on, but I would say it's a collaborative effort. And I think, um, you know, it may look different from county to county. That's why it'll be interesting to hear the genesis of the two programs that we're highlighting, you know, how they came about, you know, who's involved. I, I wouldn't say it's exclusively, you know, um, nonprofit or for profit, but you know, it takes a lot of agencies to come together with the resources and help support something like that. Thank you, Allison. The other thing I just wanted to uh, float and put a placeholder on is, you know, thinking about, I don't have an answer for this, but right now I don't believe that evictions are um, recorded in a systematic way in Michigan. So it's very difficult to get data. I know Michigan Poverty Solutions put out a report, I want to say it was almost two years ago now. And so that's something that's also a potential is to figure out what is our, you know, in order to kind of reduce the incidence, what is the incidence and what is it looking like? And what's the, you know, trajectory? Um, certainly after the pandemic, um, because we know it kind of spiked. It went down because of the rental assistance, but then it, it may have spiked back up after the moratorium. So that's something that, you know, would be a great research project or a project for someone to take on. So I just want to float that out there too. All right. Anything else from anyone before we give you back a few minutes of your day? Here's where to contact me if you want to join any of our collaborative groups. If you have any questions, feel free. Thanks for all your great thoughts and brilliance. Okay, before we leave, just to make sure understanding, if we have still applications and funding, do we get to process until fund runs out, funds run out? I'm assuming so. You're, the portal is going to close, so you're not going to take any new applications, but that should give you enough time to hopefully fund out the remaining applications. And I know that Misha is going to work with you on forecasting, looking at, you know, and hopefully you're looking at what staffing money you have versus rental assistance money. Um, yeah, their team is worried about all the applications they might not get to. So that's definitely something to kind of work with Mishta on. And Peggy, I don't know if you have any other thoughts about that. Um, yeah, definitely. The, the portal closing does not mean Sarah's ended. Um, agencies will continue to process those applications until their funding has been depleted. Um, but there are going to be applications that at the end we aren't able to fund um, because we're, we're projecting the number of applications we need um, before the 
portal is closed if we had to reopen the portal because we didn't have enough applications we could but we prefer to to not have to do that um, but definitely those applications should be processed once the portal's closed until the funding runs out and and we'll you know as each month goes by um you know be looking at the numbers and how much is left and there'll be more communications about that but um, it definitely does not end when the portal closes. Great, thank you. That clears things up. And as always, you know, it's going to have to be, yeah, good. You're welcome. Looking at where you're at and maybe, you know, putting a little over here and a little over there. I, it's an imperfect process, but I know Mr. will work with everyone to, to try and make it the best and the smoothest. So well, thanks everyone for your time. Have a great rest of your day. I hope to see you next week, Wednesday for our webinar. Take care and be well. Bye. Bye everyone.